When you see an animal like this manatee, are you more likely to think he's a skinny little thing? Or wow, whatever he eats, there must be a lot of it somewhere. Let's be honest, he's not going to hear you. It seems like this guy is packing a whole lot of extra insulation, right? But when winter comes to Florida, where most manatees live, yes, there is winter in Florida, even a little bit of cold can kill these animals if they don't find a warm place to hang out. While manatees may look a little chubby, they actually don't have that much blubber for insulation. More importantly, they have very slow metabolism, which means they can't produce heat very quickly. So cold water is a real threat to them. Most of the time, that's not a problem. They simply can't live too far from the equator. And when it gets colder where they do live, they have to find sources of warm water, like natural springs or the warm water from power plant discharges. Like the manatees, all plants and animals have some limits on the temperatures where they can survive and thrive. In fact, temperature is effectively the most important variable on the planet for determining who can live where. Whether you're snorkeling in the ocean or walking into your backyard, nothing can tell you as much about what you'll see as the temperature. If your house is in Wisconsin, you're not going to find palm trees like these outside. If you're down in Florida with the manatees, they're everywhere, but they won't be next to any apple trees. Coral reefs like this one are only found in certain places because they are only adapted to living in a narrow band of warm temperatures known as their zone of tolerance. That's actually because they get most of their food from algae that can only thrive in that not too hot, not too cold band. There are also corals that live in the deep sea that don't need algae for food and are instead adapted to the much colder temperatures found there. And loads of other deep sea animals are just as dependent on cold. As you might expect, the sun, or the lack of it in the case of the deep sea, is one of the most important things controlling temperatures. That includes seasons, because for most organisms, it's not the day-to-day -day weather shifts that are a problem. It's the long-term climate patterns that decide where they can survive. It might get very hot in New York in the summer, for instance, with the water temporarily warm enough for a coral reef. Come fall, though, as the temperatures drop, they'd be wiped out. That's reflected in average temperatures, and even a change in the average temperature in a given spot of a single degree can make a big difference. Humans are pretty similar, really. If you want, you can run outside in your bathing suit in very cold weather, and you'll be fine if you don't stay too long. But if you're out there for a few hours, you might not survive. But there's more to the story than just the sun. Let's go back here to the Indian River Lagoon in Florida. The sun doesn't set the thermostat by itself because every day the tides push ocean water in and then pull it back out at inlets like this one. Sometimes that means much cooler ocean water rushing in. Plants like mangroves love the warmth and like coral reefs and manatees, you won't find them very far north but they can handle these shifts as long as it doesn't get too cold too long. If you follow the water temperature record for a place like the Indian River Lagoon, a popular hangout for manatees, when you see the number begin to dip below 70 degrees, you're seeing a life or death shift. And you can know for sure that the manatees are looking for springs or other warm spots. All sorts of temperature shifts tell you similar things about the environment. Depending on where you live, as it starts to get colder in the fall, you might begin to see certain plants dying or birds heading south for the winter. In other words, when you see temperatures, don't think of them as just numbers. Instead, think of temperatures, especially the long-term averages that tell you about the climate in a particular place, as a formula for who can live where and the struggles they're going to face.